All right, today we're getting meta. A tutorial on making tutorials 2021. Let's get back on the grind. Hit the intro. All right, now that the caffeine levels have evened out a bit, so last year, a lot of us were probably stuck at home and in between sessions of binging The Mandalorian or watching Raised by Wolves, probably picked up a few new skills or relearned old ones, you know, watching YouTube or Skillshare or Udemy. And if you're looking to maybe pay it forward or maybe pick up a new side hustle, then this is the video for you. So this video is gonna be all about how to record tutorials for online learning. So the first thing to do when you're preparing for any tutorials, you need to do a bit of research and preparation for it. This is known as pre-production and probably the most important part of the pre-production phase is actually writing the script for the tutorial. Now there's a couple ways to write a script. Now you can write a very detailed script that you're gonna read exactly word for word. And this is really helpful when you're doing a tutorial on something really technical and you need to be really precise and accurate with your terms and what you're saying. But the problem with this is that it can lead to a bit of a dry or boring tutorial and it's kind of up to the presenter to interject a bit of personality into what you're saying. Now, the other way is to do bullet points. So basically you're just trying to hit key topics or talking points when you're presenting the tutorial. And this allows for a bit more freestyle and maybe make the tutorial a bit more fun, especially if you're talking about a kind of dry topic like a tutorial for tutorials, you know, you need to do a crazy zoom or something. But no matter what, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure to structure your tutorial so that you have clear segments or clear breaks in the topics. And this will really help with the edit because then you can do nice smooth transitions like this. So now that we have pre-production out of the way, we're ready to record. And the software that's gonna be the centerpiece here is Expert Broadcaster. Now I'm mainly gonna focus on doing basically computer software based tutorials. So if you're trying to teach someone how to use you know, Adobe Premiere Pro to edit videos, or if you're trying to teach someone how to use music production software or, you know, how to draw or something like that, or something that just, you know, you capture your desktop or maybe just like capture a simple webcam, you know, teaching guitar or something. That's all things that Expert Broadcaster is gonna be capable of, but let's talk a little bit about the hardware requirements. So these hardware requirements are to do at least like a full HD stream at about 30 FPS, which is a good starting point. So thankfully you won't need a state-of-the-art PC to record this footage unless you're planning to record gameplay footage like you're trying to put together a cyberpunk walkthrough. So as long as you have a quad-core CPU like a Intel i5 or i7 or a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, that should suffice. If you don't have that, if you have instead maybe a decent GPU with the hardware encoder, you know, like an AMD GPU or an NVIDIA GPU, pretty much all of the ones from the last couple of years have these hardware encoders known as you know, VCE for AMD or NVENC for NVIDIA. And this will do just fine as well. Another thing I recommend is to have another hard drive in your PC. So if you're gonna be recording a lot of footage, full HD footage, takes up quite a bit of space pretty fast. So if it's gonna be a lot of tutorials that's gonna add up. So either install another hard drive into your PC, like disk drives uh, give you a lot of space, they're pretty cheap, or you can get an external drive, you know, as long as it's fast, That'll work as well, a USB 3 drive or USB-C drive. Any of those are pretty great. Now, as mentioned before, we're gonna use Xplit Broadcaster to record our footage. So if we need to record our desktop, this is pretty simple. You're just gonna add a source and you're gonna go to screen capture and you're gonna select your monitor. So you can select any monitors that are connected. If you need to capture a specific window or a piece of software, you can use window capture or you can actually use smart selection if you wanna capture just a specific region of that window. If you're trying to capture like your camera or your webcam, you know, or maybe like a DSLR hooked to a capture card, or maybe even a video game console hooked to a capture card. You're gonna go into your video sources and then you're gonna select a video capture input and then just select your capture card or webcam. So if you're looking to capture sounds from your PC or maybe capture your microphone for voiceover, you're gonna wanna go to tools and then settings and then click on the audio tab. And then you're gonna wanna leave the system sound as default. And basically this will capture anything that's played from your PC, whatever's on the default device. So this is like your game sound or whatever program you're working on. And then in the microphone selection, select the microphone that you're gonna be recording. So this could be your audio interface or a USB microphone or even your headset. And then click okay. And then you wanna click on the mixer icon right here. This is gonna bring up the audio mixer. And you don't really need to mix this as the final mix just yet. You just wanna make sure that your levels aren't clipping. We'll cover this a bit later and how we adjust audio levels and how we set up multi-track recording for mixing post edit. but. If you're just gonna record and be one and done, you can adjust the levels here if you like. 
So up here we can set the resolution and the frame rate. So I'm gonna set it to 1920 by 1080p, 30 FPS. Now you're not limited here. You can set it to whatever you want. It's really based on the limitations of your computer. Now, if you're doing, let's say tutorials for TikTok or Instagram, I recommend maybe setting the resolution to a one by one ratio, like 1080 by 1080. All right, now let's go to our recording settings. So click on the record menu here, then click on the gear symbol. Now in the codec section, this is gonna again depend on your computer's components. So if you got a really good multi-core CPU, then select X264. If you have one of those NVIDIA GPUs or AMD GPUs with VCE or NVENC, select those instead. And then for the quality settings, just set it to ultra. In the audio settings, make sure to set the bit rate to 192. And then we have these extra settings here at the bottom. Now, first, make sure you enable force constant frame rate, especially if you'll be editing your video in Premiere or something like that. And then you wanna enable multi-track recording. We'll talk about this in a bit. And then if you're someone that's maybe just gonna record these as a one and done and upload them straight away, then you wanna enable optimize for YouTube, if that's gonna be your platform of choice. So now that you're done with your recording settings, click okay, then go click record, and then you're all set to go. Now, one tip I'd like to give is that if you listen to my earlier advice about breaking up your script into segments, Basically, you're gonna to wanna to record one segment at a time. And what you do is you just keep on recording, you know, take after take. And when you get that one good take, you stop the recording. This will help cut down a lot of time in editing because instead of say recording one long take with everything, you basically know exactly where the good take always is. So you can just basically scrub to that point, chop it out. But let's actually talk about editing. So now that you have all this footage, how are you gonna put it together? Well, if you need a free video editor, XSplit actually has the Express Video Editor. It's free. There's a link to download it in the description. The only problem is, is that you can't really adjust the audio tracks, so you have to adjust the levels before you record. For pretty much any other editing software, before you import it into that software, I recommend you put all the recordings for one tutorial in its own folder, and then you can usually just drag and drop this folder into the editing software, like I'm using Premiere here. And when I drop it in, it puts it into a bin, and this makes it a lot easier for managing your recordings, especially if you have to make B-roll or go back and re-record things. And another cool thing is the way that XSplit actually writes its files, it writes them in sequential order. So it's easy to put your clips in order, especially if you recorded your tutorial sequentially. So finally, if you enabled multi-track audio, if you drag your clip onto a timeline, you'll see all the different audio tracks pop up. And this is system sound, microphone sound, mix sound, stream only sound, application only audio sound. We'll have a different video to explain what all those different tracks are. But the most important thing when you're mixing for tutorial is you wanna make sure your voice is as clear as possible and there's nothing in the background audio that's overpowering it. Now, as for how to edit videos and put together entertaining or engaging tutorials, that's a different topic for a different video and it really depends on your editing software and your experience. But if you have any questions about how to put together different types of tutorial content, let me know. And what kind of editing software do you use? Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like if this was helpful and subscribe and make sure to enable notifications. And as always, stay on the grind.